Hello folks, Craig signing in for Pure Xbox. On the cards today, we have our very own hands-on preview with the upcoming Dead Island 2 game. Now, I wasn't the lucky sod who got hands-on with the game. That responsibility fell to our wonderful writer, Ben Kerry. I'm not jealous in any way. Nope. So what I've got planned for you today is that I will read through Ben's hands-on thoughts and feelings with Dead Island 2 whilst you get to sit back and enjoy the beautiful landscape of Hell A with all of the zombie inhabitants getting their heads smashed in one by one. Well, that's the spiel. Let's get into it. It's safe to say that we were somewhat skeptical on Dead Island heading into this hands-on preview. The skepticism wasn't based on what we've seen of the game so far, or on our history with the series, which we actually quite liked the first Dead Island, but instead the game's protracted development period. After all, Dead Island 2 was revealed almost 10 whole years ago. That's a very long time. That's a 10-year-old child. At this point, and such a lengthy dev cycle doesn't always work in a game's favor, you start to wonder why it took so long. Thankfully, most of our preconceived notions were crushed into the ground almost immediately, like an injured zombie squirming around as it awaits getting curb stomped into oblivion. Yep, Dead Island 2 is just that sort of game. A real turn your brain off slasher that quickly revels in the absurd concept that you sprint around Beverly Hills trying to find the most creative ways to take out the undead. Our hands-on time with Dan Buster's sequel covered roughly the first five hours of the game, including a handful of main story missions as Dead Island 2's LA-based map starts to open up. What immediately stands out, at least on Xbox Series X, is just how pretty the game is. It might not be the most technically advanced video game of all time, but the way the blood-soaked undead contrast against the bright colors and pure whites of LA's suburban neighborhoods is a real sight to behold. It all unfolds at a lovely 60 FPS on Series X as well, feeling very fluid in motion. That's just as well because this smoothness helps you take advantage of Dead Island 2's flesh system, a fully locational, evisceral system for humanoids, as it's also known. Basically, slice away at any part of these bloody zombies and they'll begin carving up like an undead Sunday roast, as limbs fly off and bits and pieces of zombie flesh fall to the ground. But I will say, we've compared it to a Sunday roast, but maybe not eat a zombie. It might not work out well for you and the family. It smells like me ma's boiled stew. The main missions seem pretty varied too, at least from what we played at the beginning of the game. Sure, they largely boil down to hacking and slashing your way through hordes of zombies, but in just a few hours, we chase the undead through a movie set, save an intoxicated couple from being swarmed as they partied in the LA hills, and even danced our way through a boss fight as music rang out in the abandoned hotel ballroom. Dead Island 2 makes good use of its unique setting, and it certainly doesn't take itself too seriously. Having said that, we did take issue with some of the game's general open world structure. From what we can tell, Dead Island 2 isn't a seamless open world. You run into warp points and lock gates as the game moves you from one part of Hell A to another. While we're not super bothered about how big the open world will be in terms of pure scale, it is a little jarring to run into load screens in an open world game in 2023. These structural issues didn't affect the main campaign much at all, but it felt like just having fun in an open world was stifled a bit by the game's segmented design. You have plenty of freedom when it comes to weapons, skills, and character abilities though. Pretty much every tool can be modified and upgraded via blueprints and workbenches, meaning you can add some heckin' cool-ass elemental mods to your weapons as you battle the undead. There's also a pretty in-depth skill card system at play here, which we dabbled a little bit during our hands-on time. You can use it to swap out active and passive character abilities, upgrading things like your kick and slide moves, among others. It never gets old yeeting zombies across the room with a well-timed drop kick to the face. We're hopeful that Dead Island 2 can bring everything together when it launches for Xbox on April 21st, 2023, 
While we have our reservations about the game's open world sandbox and how limiting it could feel over time, we really enjoyed the opening hours of the game and especially during its varied main missions. Dam Buster Studios might well have just pulled off the unthinkable in saving Dead Island 2 from the brink of game dev infection. We'll know for sure in just a few weeks. Are you looking forward to finally getting your own hands on Dead Island 2? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe and do the dishes and clean your room. Oh, and also check out the two videos being suggested to you. As for now, I've been Craig and I'm signing off.